So there we've touched upon some of the possibilities from the modulation section, the LFO, the sample and hold, and the audio rate sample and hold mixer modulation. There is another modulation source that I've not touched on, and it's the switch over here that I've been ignoring, the one on VCO1. So that switch on VCO2, as you remember, is the sync on and off. The switch here next to VCO1 says audio keyboard on, LF keyboard off. And what this does is switch VCO1 from being an audio rate oscillator, a sound source, to being a low frequency oscillator. So VCO1 can operate as a second LFO, but in the process you sacrifice it as an audio oscillator. So let's have a look at that and get these settings back to something a little more sane. <laughs> So this is both oscillators together, put VCO1 into low frequency mode, and it's down into the clicks. Now the coarse frequency control of VCO1 is marked sort of from 20Hz at the bottom up to 2kHz at the top, but it's also marked 0.2 up to 20 the same range as the dedicated LFO. So you can make the clicks really slow or you can make them really fast. Now whereas LFO 1 you've got sine wave output and square wave output obviously the output VCO 1 is sawtooth or square wave so that does give you another LFO waveform shape that you can use. So let's bring down the level of VCO1 because we don't really want to listen to the clicks. Bring up VCO2 and this is where the sample and hold mixer comes into play again because it allows you to route VCO1 as a modulation source to VCO2. Now we've just done that to have audio rate FM but it also means now that we can route it there as an LFO to VCO2. So let's raise the sample and hold mixer slider for VCO2. Raise the slider for VCO1 in the sample and hold mixer. Now the switch here in the sample and hold mixer, as I said before, you can switch between the two waveform shapes of VCO1. So that's obviously giving you um, square wave but now this is where you get the different LFO wave shape by switching it into sawtooth to me that actually sounds as if it's the other way around to what the diagram shows on the front panel that shows it with the um, upright and then the slope down but it sounds more like it's the other way that it's ramping up and then dropping down and ramping up again and I can never remember which is sawtooth and which is ramp wave but um, yeah it does sound to have a, a ramp effect and of course you can adjust the speed of VCO1 as an LFO in exactly the same way as we've done already using the coarse and fine frequency controls And if we flick the switch, you've then got the normal dedicated LFO control of VCO2. <laughs> 
and the rates are completely different because you've got two different frequency controls, one on VCO1, one on the LFO. So one thing that you can do, VCO1 is acting as an LFO on the pitch of VCO2 at the rate determined by the frequency controls of VCO1, but you can change the frequency controls using the dedicated LFO. So you have a variable rate LFO affecting VCO2. And that sounds like this. So if I remove um, the influence of the LFO on VCO1, bring it back in. You can have more profound effects by, say, um, using the sample and hold to randomly change the frequency of VCO1 acting as an LFO. And you could smooth out those changes using the output lag of the sample and hold. Another way you can um, change the rate of course will be to flick that switch on um, the sample and hold FM slider so that you've got envelope control of the frequency of VCO1 acting as an LFO on VCO2. And of course with the slider at maximum, you're changing the pitch of VCO1 so much that it's going from audio rate down to LFO rate. So that can give you some really cool effects. so much in the bass registers. Pull the attack down. Push it right the way up again very slowly because it's really stiff. You can do all sorts of cool stuff with it. I mean, if you don't have the ADSR control up quite so high, then you would just vary the rate of VCO1 as an LFO, but always being an LFO, not going up into audio rate. Let's bring the sustain level down again. Try with a bit more attack. Nudge the ADSR control up a bit. Let's, um, in the sample and hold mix, put the waveform of VCO1 back to square wave. You can do all sorts of cool things with that. And then, of course, we've got VCO1 set as square wave in the sample and hold mixer. We could play around with the pulse width. So you have not only square wave LFO, which the dedicated LFO can also do square wave, but because of the... Pulse width controls of VCO1, you've also now got, in addition to the dedicated LFO square wave, you've also got pulse wave LFO. And 
if you wanted, you could have pulse width modulated pulse wave LFO control. Yeah. So all this variety of things that you can do stems from two subtle differences between the setup of VCO1 and VCO2. The fact that VCO2 has sample and hold mixer control of its pitch, whereas VCO1 has square wave LFO control, and the fact that the switch for VCO1 is audio rate and LFO, not sync. I mean, you wouldn't need two sync switches. But yeah, those two subtle differences, they've really thought about how can we extend the functionality? And they've extended it in a massive way with just two switches, two tiny differences between VCO1 and VCO2. So yeah, when you start getting that sound of using the envelope to sweep the frequency VCO1 through audio rate into LFO rate or sweep it back the other way, when you start applying the filter, you get some really cool sounds with that. So yeah, that's probably as good a time as any to move on to the filter. <laughs> 